Hi guys, welcome to Freezing Pretty. Honey here. And unfortunately, today's video ain't a happy one. So, <laughs> if you don't want to deal with sad stuffs today, maybe it's better to just stop watching here. But as always, my channel has been a very kind of personal place, a very honest and in the moment type of channel. And during this Samhain Halloween season, as all of us, we are dealing with this transition period between the veils, between life and death, between the cycle of life, at least here on the Northern Hemisphere, where the nature is freezing up, the leaves are frozen, yellow and brown, when nature is preparing for its rest, and when the veil is the thinnest, and we tend to remember our ancestors and loved ones. This year for me, this period is even harder than normally. As the ones that follow me on Instagram already know that Sorry guys, <laughs> I, I tried to hold up my tears, but I can't. But I hope you accept me crying on this channel once again. I lost my companion, my dog, and even though not many people might be able to relate who haven't maybe had a, an animal companion so dear. I, I used to be a person that maybe didn't understand why people cry so much on dying pets. But here I am. Life is teaching me again. Kicking me to my butt and making me understand. My little French bulldog Minnie, she, she was only half a year old when we got her diagnosis of uh, congenital, you know, kidney defect. And the vet, the veterinarian already then told me that it would be better to just, you know, quit on the dog there and let her go, which we didn't. And she got some medication and a special diet and she lived over three more very happy and fulfilling years with us. But since the day of the diagnosis, I... I already knew that we were gonna live each day to the fullest together and I pampered her and she was with me whenever I was at home all the time <laughs> she even came to the toilet with me she she was my the light of my days and now when her condition dropped and we had to let her go it was the hardest decision I have ever made so far in my life to, to take her to the vet and, and let her go. It was a Tuesday evening when the sun was setting when we took her to the vet and I got to hold her the whole time and Hobby was in front of her looking her into her tiny eyes the whole time. So she wasn't alone. She was held and she saw a familiar face. There was beauty, but a lot of pain. So much pain in that moment. And when we left the room, she stayed there. I had to go out, and I just needed to go out from the door immediately, so I wouldn't run back to her. It was so hard. And I went out and I saw the beautiful sunset. And I cried. And after that, we all cried. But I guess we were lucky. We had time to say goodbye. <laughs> Many might find this silly, but I took her on her last night to bath in the bathtub with me. I washed her fur with this magical herbal soap. I took her to sauna. 
since sauna has been the ritual in my culture for birth and for death. So we took the sauna, I cleansed her, I blessed her with an oil, and she got to eat salmon as much as she wanted. She hasn't been able to eat anything delicious with her diagnosis. So she got to enjoy that. On my outside altar in the evening, right before we went to the vet, me and my daughter, we went out and put out one white rose and coins for her travels because there was no chance for me to give her the coins on her way to the cremation place. So I left the coins outside on my altar in case she needed those. Just in case dogs do travel on the ferry across the river. I don't know, but I just wanted her to have those just in case. And I asked my ancestors to be there to receive her and to take care of her until it was my time to go. And I told Minnie that whenever it is my time, I hope that she can be there to be the first one to greet me when it's my time to pass. And, and even though I have been dealing with the, with the concept of death and dying for a few years now, since also my mother with her dementia is in that phase now that it's just a matter of time and it has been already the process of letting go since her personality has changed so much already that much of her has gone beyond behind the veil already learning to deal with loss and death and all that revolves around that the circle of life is something that well, not, not many people want to deal with. Some people don't want to think about that. But I'd rather do. And I, for example, found a really interesting book from Rose Ank Publishing uh, by Sharon Day, which as a psychopomp, because in witchcraft, there is a lot of working with the thought of the afterlife and with spirits and with loved ones and especially during this season Samhain and in Finnish history we used to celebrate Gekri it was our Halloween our Samhain but the theme is the same if the name is different and in days of old we used to heat up the sauna for the loved ones so they could take the sauna and cleansed there and food was served also for the dead and I know that many people still do these type of things on the date of Samhain when we move from October to November in our family that will be the time that we get the ashes of Mini back I went with an option to get a necklace that will have a pinch of her ashes in there and the rest we will bury in our garden and I'm hoping that the ground won't be frozen so I could plant a rose bush on top of her ashes to have a place to remember her I put out a little altar for her on my window just for her but she is already also on my ancestor altar for my loved ones has like I have things that have belonged to my grandparents for her I decided to put a dog's toothbrush chewing thing there and even though grieving is is hard and it has hit me mentally and but also physically I've had I've had tough times but it's just a process that I decided that I need to live through, accept the pain for me to be able to heal 
Some people choose the option of not trying to think and to forget as fast as they can. But to me, that is not an option. For me, it's all about facing the grief, facing the loss, to be able to heal one day and to never forget her, even though it might sound silly, but she was the love of my life in a way. I loved her so much each and every day. And she loved me. She loved me with such innocence and happiness and joy. And to her, I was always perfect. That was the beauty with her. To me, she was always perfect. And to her, I was perfect every day. No matter how tired I was, no matter how hungry I was, no matter of anything. And I'm grateful that I got to experience that since it was since the first time I saw her. <laughs> we went to see her and she ran towards me and the first words I said to her, to this dog I've never met before, I said, hello darling, in Finnish. I said, hey Rakas, and we just fell in love immediately. It was like meeting somebody that I've always known and that I will always know. And even though I wish I would have the certain feeling of knowing that I will meet her again, more than that, I'm still in the phase that I hope that I will meet her again. And we will know each other and we will love each other in some place and some time again. And because on top of this great loss in my life, it has been uh, an ex exciting year filled with changes, big changes, moving to a new house, being initiated into a coven, a lot of changes. <laughs> and there was a time when I said to my dearest friends that I'm hoping that something would happen when times were too stagnant during the COVID times when things were just stagnant. And now I have got what I wished for. <laughs> on hindsight it's not probably always wise to to wish for a tower moment and, but I did and I have received and now it's just the time to to accept and to learn and to grow but by sharing my grief and sharing my tears I wanted to wish you all a beautiful and meaningful period of life now during this sound or Halloween or whatever you choose to celebrate in your country and in your culture. I hope you can remember your loved ones. I hope those memories bring you tears and laughter. Because even through the pain and even through the tears, the gratitude of her love is the biggest feeling. Even though the gap is now huge, the house is empty, everything feels like a void. And it's just a matter of learning to live with this silence until life continues to change as it does. And on top of all, what I wish from the bottom of my heart is that each and every one of you get to experience that love that I got to experience with her, with someone. No matter if it's a person, if it's a, a spouse or a child or whomever, but to everyone, I just hope that you can be loved just as you are, because we all are in the deepest core of ourselves, perfect just the way we are, even with our flaws and everything. And if there's somebody watching who is going through grief, know that there are many of here who are dealing with the same thing. And even though in those moments when we feel the most alone, we never truly are. And I hope our loved ones, no matter humans or animals, that they will watch on us and that they will visit us if they can during this time when the veil is thinnest. Thank you for being here today to share my tears and to share my, my loss. But as always, I just needed to be real and tell you guys where I'm at now. Let's hope that next time It'll be something bit more positive. Until next time. Bye guys.